I've started reading literature recently, and I have a few questions. What is literature? Why is literature? Who is literature? Bottom line is, read a book, people. I just finished reading The Great Gatsby, which was good. And then I moved on to The Grapes of Wrath. I bought it at a used bookstore because, uh, well, quite frankly, it felt great in my hands. And uh, insert inappropriate joke there, I suppose. But you know what? I tried. Okay, I really tried. I got 250 pages through this thing, and the first sign was when, quite literally, it's split in two pieces. So, I mean, you know, take a hint right there. I stopped reading it after 250 pages. Couldn't go on any further. It was just really dry to me, and I get it, you know, it's a slog. They're going through Oklahoma, they're escaping the Dust Bowl, and it's a slow trek because their car's kind of beaten down. But I just, I had to stop. I had to put it down. And when it ripped in two, I was like, that's all the information I need right there. That's that's the sign to, to move on. And so I did. I moved on to the Bible. I started reading Genesis and Exodus. I got through both of them. Wow, uh, would be the word. Uh, those things are very dense. The symbolism, my gosh, is incredibly heavy in the first two books of the Bible. And I'm sure throughout the whole entire Bible, it's pretty heavy. But you have to lift it. You have to go higher. You have to put another weight on there. But I finished Genesis and Exodus, then I moved on to the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm on Matthew right now, talking about Jesus. Who was he? Where was he born? Where is he going? What did he say? Right? All important things. But you know, I just got to a point where I stopped, took a breath, and asked myself, what in God's name is literature? I don't know if you guys have experienced this moment in your reading lives, but I'm just like, I'm reading these books that are called literature, and it's like, what the hell is this? What's the point? What am I, you know, where are the tea leaves here that I'm supposed to be reading? What am I supposed to get out of this? And you know, I think that is just part of what we sign up for when we are reading hard books, the great books, so to speak. And I know, I already made a video on the benefits of reading great literature, and I know what they are, but I had a moment where I was just like, I need I need to understand this a little more. So I started thinking about what I thought literature was, because I had truly never asked the question of myself. What I thought literature was, was just a bunch of complicated books that society had elevated for whatever reason, because they were sophisticated and complicated or something. And everybody has sort of deemed them great for one reason or another. Which all of that is true to some degree. I mean, the great books... They are deemed great by quite a lot of people. And a lot of them are incredibly complicated to read. The Bible, probably chief among them. But you know, after that first answer came through my head of, oh yeah, the books, they're just complicated and a lot of people like them. After that passed through my head, I actually took a moment, I sat there, and I was like, what does Google have to say about this? So I scoured the interwebs to find the true definition of the word literature. And you know what it turned out? There wasn't a single definition of literature. It can mean many things to different people. But what does it mean to me? Well, that's a great question. And you know, I found a definition that I like, and that's the one I'm gonna share with you in this video. Literature, <clears throat> literature, as best as I can define it, is a book that expertly depicts human nature. It connects with us so well because it represents the archetypal stories that are told through characters and settings that appeal to everyone. And in literature, everything has meaning. Okay, seriously, it's like its own language. And I've identified what I think are four of the key aspects of that language, where if you don't understand how to translate these things, you're not going to understand literature in general. It's going to be very hard for you at the very least. And the four things are setting character, plot, and symbolism. Now, that's not to say that these things don't matter outside of literature, but the significance of all of them together is definitely heightened when you're reading the great books. And when I said before that I think literature expertly depicts human nature, and I think that that makes sense because the great authors, like a Tolstoy or a Dostoevsky, they are people who really understood human nature, and that's what they're writing about, fundamentally. So what we get from the great books and the great authors, it's like a lesson on human nature. It's a history lesson told in these epic settings full of symbolism, and that's why they're great. They can stir all that up together and have it impact you. It'll hit you right here, right in the feels. You know when you read a great book and it's like, it's there, you know? It's kind of gnawing at you. It hits you. But in these great books, everything... The characters, the setting, the plot, the symbols, 
They all matter. And I think that one of the main reasons that literature is difficult to read is because we don't understand how to translate all of that. Each of those things is like, it's like a little puzzle piece that's part of a whole. And if you don't understand one of those puzzle pieces, you're not gonna be able to put the whole puzzle together. And with the great book, since they have all of those things working together, there's kind of layers upon layers of meaning that we have to slowly go through and figure out. And one of the best techniques that will help you do that is to reread. Like any activity that you're very good at, what happens, right? Unless you're born with an innate talent to do that thing like an expert off the bat, out the womb, then here's what you do. You practice and you practice and you practice. And over time, the basics that you started out with, those just become second nature to you. And then you're able to add other cool tricks to your tool belt that make you that much better at performing whatever task you're doing. And with reading, it's no different. You start through once. You gather basic details. Who are the characters? What's the setting? What's the overall plot structure? All that basic stuff comes together in the first read. Then in the second read, okay, now, now we know what the book is about. We've gone through it. We've got that basic structure. That's in our tool belt. We don't need to think about it. But now we can look a little closer at, let's say, the symbolism. And that's something you'll have to study. Study symbolism. Really get in there and find out in all those nooks and crannies what these images mean that authors continually bring up over time. Those are important details that when you unlock the significance of those symbols, what you read the first time, will take on a completely different meaning to you. And then you'll go through it again, and maybe this time you'll look at the setting more. You'll kind of analyze the surroundings of the characters. You can study the history that those characters were placed in. What was the time like? Those are all the little puzzle pieces that will help you unlock the meaning of that book. And as you repeat that process over time, as you read the great books, and you see the common threads through all of them, and you study things like symbolism and characters and the history around it, you start to become a person who is able to, through one or two reads, you're able to see all those things at the same time. And so it's not such a chore for you to have to get through these. And to be clear, this isn't a process that's going to take you, you know, weeks or months. This happens over the span of years. You got to put in a little elbow grease if you want to get there. But I do want to say that it is okay to not like a piece of literature. Consider literature like movies. People love movies. People love certain movies. People hate certain movies. A lot of people like Star Wars, for example, but there are people out there, okay, as ill-informed as they are, that don't like Star Wars, and that's fine. It's just not their cup of tea. Just like the Grapes of Wrath wasn't my cup of tea, so I ripped it in half. And you may not like it in that moment. You know, books are kind of a moody thing. What mood are you in? Pick the book based on your mood. A lot of people do that kind of thing, and it works for them. So maybe the book isn't connecting with you right now, Put it down. Maybe it'll connect with you in a year, a day. Who knows? By the way, if you've gotten any value out of this video whatsoever, please hit the like button. Comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think literature is, what it means to you, and maybe some of the techniques that you've used to help get yourself through the really difficult books. And as always, to see more content, subscribe to the channel for more content. But now let's go back to the content. Content, content, content. So I hope that knowing what literature is helps and knowing that to me, it seems like the definition that a lot of people can agree on is that it, it depicts human nature very accurately through archetypal stories. And a lot of the reasons why people like literature is because it's relatable in some way, shape, or form to the masses. And embedded in most of these stories is some sort of you could call it psychological lesson or guiding principle or truth that has been really helpful and useful to people who have elevated these books and, and have tried to canonize them and alert people that, hey, there's something there, right? You know, maybe they can't put their finger on it, but they know something's there. And that's why it's good to read books like these. And you know, you don't have to read literature, but if the benefit from reading literature is that you become more articulate and you better yourself in all sorts of ways, then I think that that changes the question from should I read literature to how can I make reading literature a habit? And one of the best ways to do that, I think, for me and for a lot of people, is to do it at your own pace. Whether that's reading five pages a day, 10 pages a day, I don't know. You know, find what works for you and find something that you're interested in. Don't read The Great Gatsby if you're not interested in it. Find something, there's hundreds, there's probably thousands of books that are classified as literature and I'm sure one of them will catch your eye. I've heard a lot of people talk about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or The Count of Monte Cristo. I haven't read any of those, but I've heard that they are good starting points. And do your own research. If you don't like something, move on to the next one. 
but keep reading until you find something that you like. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's video. I hope you got some value out of that. I think that it's, it's a good question to ask. What exactly is literature? Because, well, if I'm going to read it, I sure as hell should probably know what it is. So I hope it also helped you. And again, if it did, please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.